So we're here to talk about research, uh, PhD research and your experiences as students at the University of Manchester, um, particularly in this School of Mechanical Aerospace Civil Engineering. I was just wondering, you know, if you had to kind of give a quick snippet about what your research is, like, you know, if you were going to do that, what would you say your research is about? Mm. Um, I'd say biomechanics, understanding how humans walk and how we can optimise that. Okay, what about you? I work in computational fluid dynamics. Right and I work in something called turbulence modelling which is basically the physics capturing side of computational fluid dynamics. Um, I am looking to apply that to motorsport, to race cars, right. and I do a lot of numerical simulations. Okay, wow, that <laughs> sounds interesting. What about yourself? Um, so I look at experimental um, aerodynamics yeah. for very high speed flows, hypersonic flows, right. and how you can use different new methods to extract the most information about it. I have two supervisors, yeah. um, one of them brings more of the, the space aspect yeah. um, because it's intending to look at satellites during their re-entry and how mm -hmm. we can make them better so they won't have to breathe in the future. Yeah. So I have one supervisor provides sort of the space industry link there right. and then the other brings in the, the experience for the, the high speed aerodynamics and the flow diagnostics I'm trying to apply. Right. So it works together as like a three way sort of collaborative team. Okay. Is that something that you have with your sort of experience? Yeah, so we work in a big research team actually, um, quite a lot of postdoc researchers and PhDs within the group. Um, and I mean, I'm a big fan of, of teamwork, and I think that's how really how it should be at PhD level. You know, it's kind of you 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 actually as a PhD researcher, you're the expert. You know more than your supervisor. So, you know, it's really important that supervisors learn from the PhD researchers, and it gives you that opportunity to discuss your work with academics, kind of one to one, or to see how people comment on your work. And I think that can be really a really valuable thing. So, what about writing and publishing? Is that something that is is uh, you know on your radars? I think it has to be as yeah. a PhD student for sure. So yeah. when it comes to writing those aspects to consider like where are you going to have your work published? Yeah. Because different journals will have different uh, audiences that they, they appeal to mm -hmm. and uh, different rates of impact to the community as mm -hmm. such. Being a PhD student at Manchester University, you are very likely to be part of a research community with a high international impact. Mm -hmm. So you know you come from a reputable institution and you're very likely to make a good name for yourself out there in the research world. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's interesting often in these fields of space research and, and you know, your research obviously as well, um, that you get these applications that sometimes it might be meant for one thing, but actually the benefits are, are much, much wider, which I think is quite exciting when you think about it like that. In terms of the, the wider world and the big picture, what, what do you hope like, your research is going like, to achieve in the future? Where do you see it like, developing? I hope that my kind of research will allow people to regain a level of mobility that they haven't been able to regain in previous years. Yeah. Um, especially people from developing countries with um, rugged terrains and don't have access to power systems, mm. to be able to go out there and walk wherever they want to walk and run and live yeah. and continue day-to-day -day life the same way that we do but sometimes take for granted. I had an end goal of wanting to start an R&D company doing mobility solutions. That's why I chose this particular um, um, degree with this particular supervisor. Um, so in three to five years hopefully have that um, research and development enterprise still doing prosthesis and other mobility solutions um, and taking research into tangible products. I would like to work in the racing industry say three to five years time from now on particularly say Formula One. Now if we think about how technologically advanced that is as a field you may not see it directly, but it does have a social impact in terms of the, it provides new technologies which in time are being used in day-to-day -day life. So it's basically pushing the field of research further. How easy did you find it to secure funding for your PhD? What sort of opportunities were out there? So my PhD in particular is mainly sponsored by an industrial company and it just came as a, as a package. Luckily, these types of PhDs are not rare, so they are competitive, but uh, it's quite easy to come across one. And then you will have your funding secured for four years, and you're not allowed to exceed the four-year uh, period, and it's, uh, it's quite a good deal. What about you? I, I had a mixture of funding. It was very tough getting funding for me. Um, firstly, I, I, have, I have had, I guess, three different funders. So it's been a, a mishmash of different funding, but I think in the difficulty of finding funding, I've also learned how to write grant proposals. Yeah, sounds like a great experience. <laughs> Which has come very in, in handy. Yeah. What about you, Tom? 
Um, my, I was fortunate to secure uh, funding with ESA, so that was through a network partnering initiative. So with that, you get to work closely with, with ESA and problems that they're trying to solve, and it gives the opportunity to get a more of an academic uh, voice um, within within European area, mm. but also you get as part of that you get opportunities to collaborate. You get to to work over there, so there is it is in fact it acts like an industry type experience because you're working with the people who've given you the problem that you want to solve. Mm. So it was really good. That's good. Any sort of thoughts yourselves about you know the skills that you're getting during your PhD that are kind of broader than research that you might want to take out to the to the wider world in future. Well, I guess a PhD is a doctor of philosophy, so you learn to become generally more analytical. You tend to have better problem-solving skills and to be more pragmatic in your decisions. Mm. For me, it goes beyond just the engineering skills and the analytical skills. It's all the additional training I've, I've gotten anyway from the university, mm. um, specifically entrepreneurial training. Okay. Um, attending this kind of training courses um, and competitions like Venture Further have allowed me to kind of activate the brain, the business portion of my brain and gain skills that are outside engineering but will kind of feed into my professional growth once yeah. I leave um, with a PhD and, and, and go beyond. What about you? Um, I think, well, I think because we all live on the same pale blue lot in the universe, I think it's yeah. important that we, we recognise that yeah. and that all, all of our small bits of research all together will help to, to protect it, whether it's through the, the climate or helping others or just having fun. I think it's important that we recognise it's important to, to look after each other. Yeah. Um, and I think that's underneath all of the things that you, you might start researching for, um, the desire to understand and to help others for me was the biggest driver. Mm -hmm.